Thank you, Steve. Steve. Um, as he mentioned, I want to talk about uh, antioxidants and oxidative stress. And I'm going to have you think outside the box today a little bit because there's a lot, of course, labs out there today that are talking about testing or there's various ways of looking at antioxidants. And, of course, when we think about antioxidants or oxidative stress, we, of course, think of various conditions. And I'm going to talk about some conditions that aren't so popular to uh, the media in regards to oxidative stress, but everything that we've heard about. And I'm going to correlate how the antioxidants need to be looked at because I think a lot of us are looking down a tunnel when we are evaluating oxidative stress. If I can get this to go forward. So, of course, one of the major concerns today that everybody's looking at is the neurodegenerative diseases. And according to the most current literature, every 66 seconds in the United States, we have a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's. In approximately 15 to 20 years, they say every 33 seconds, we're going to have a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And the thing that we have to look at, of course, is what are the things that are really affecting this particular disease along with some of the other neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and just general dementia and so on. And of course, everybody's talking about oxidation and we need to control that, um, the uh, antioxidants and balance them out and of course, look at the oxidative stress. And of course, when we've talked about oxidative stress, a lot of people talk about cancers and, and cardiovascular disease. As you can see here, when we look at the two main hallmarks of the aged brain, there's two things that we really look at in regards to nutritional intervention. One, oxidative stress, and of course, the polyunsaturated fatty acid dysregulation. And when we look at the fats, of course, we look at lipid peroxidation, and as we develop certain free radicals, we damage that lipid portion of the cell membrane, of course, we get the lipid peroxidation, which causes further problems. And you can see that this has been documented in numerous pieces of literature, but neurochemical research in 2007 does a very good job of indicating how important it is that we monitor the oxidative stress. And you can see here, these are things that happen when we have lipid peroxidation. We, of course, affect the cell membrane. We want to get an affect the membrane-bound receptors, of course, the ion channels, and as well as the signaling um, molecular function. So when we look at these particular steps, is how can we take nutrition and affect these particular properties? And that's the big question. And are we looking at the nutrition from a vast array of supplementation and or nutrients? As Steve mentioned, I, uh, I've been in practice 32 years, and I can tell you from looking at numerous conditions in patients, and a lot of patients, of course, come to me with supplementation, and they say, I'm taking this product and this product, and I always ask them, how do you know it's working? Well, I just assume you. I read this article on this particular nutrient, and I'm taking it. It's always nice to hear that patients feel better, but the question is, are we really addressing an intracellular function of that patient? Because, once again, you can see here, these are some of the things that have been found in the uh, scientific literature, is properties that we have to address. One of the things is I see a lot of marathoners and a lot of triathletes in my practice. And one of the things that, of course, always is surprising to them is they come into my practice, I do bioelectrical impedance on them, and they may have 5%, 6% body fat. They eat healthy. They think everything's perfect, and yet their stamina is a problem from time to time. Their joints hurt from time to time or on a regular basis. They you know, have degenerative processes that are going on. And you can see here that there are certain nutrients, and I'm going to talk about other ones besides CoQ10, that actually have been shown to be effective with exercise. And when we look at the athlete, especially the high intense athlete, like your marathoners and your triathlons uh, individuals, that we have to address this. And think about professional or college or high school kids are ex exercising on a very intense level. I actually went to college on a football scholarship I wanted to play for the NFL. I got a shot at it. I didn't make it. I'm here today, but I'm glad of what I do. I enjoy what I do. But I can tell you it's very instrumental to these athletes and people that are exercising today. So a lot of people are exercising thinking that they're helping their health, and they are to some extent with cardiovascular uh, reasons, but at the same time they may be depleting their body and causing some problems that are eventually going to catch up with them. And it may be a very short time or it may be 20, 30 years down the road. I'll tell you a real quick uh, story. I have a triathlete athlete that came to me about five years ago. His name's Tim. 
and he ran the Houston Marathon. And two days after the Houston Marathon, he wasn't feeling good. And he thought, well, maybe caught a virus or something running the marathon. So he went to his general practitioner, and the general practitioner asked him, how do you feel? He says, you know, I'm just not feeling well. I'm fatigued. I'm real thirsty. I'm urinating a lot. And the doctor looked at him and said, it sounds like you have diabetes. He goes, no, no. He said, I don't have any family history of diabetes. I'm a triathlete. I exercise all the time. I eat halfway decent. And he said, I don't think that's the problem. General practitioner drew blood on him. He had a serum uh, glucose of 425. Okay, he is a diabetic to this day. Two days later, he comes into my practice. I do testing on him. He has 11 nutritional deficiencies in the blood test that I performed on him. Nine of the 11 are antioxidants. And as a result, and we've seen this, that antioxidant therapy if it's incorporated on a high profile athlete like that can help prevent some of these problems. A lot of people don't realize this, but 95%, this is noted in some of the literature, 95% of type 1 diabetics is due not to genetics, it's actually due to environmental factors. And we know that people actually can develop diseases like diabetes because the free radicals become so high that they actually damage the pancreas. We know that there's other organs and other tissues that can be affected with it. So here's a person that's taking a product like this because they exercise, because they read this in Men's Health or Women's Health magazine, that I need to take CoQ10 because I exercise. About, uh, hormone testing. And yet they have other problems and down the road. <clears throat> the